kidding. <laughs> yeah. It's Carrie Naga. The no-tail disruptor. You it's Carrie Naga. What do you, well, yeah. He hasn't played in a while. All-time favorites. There's the disruptor. Of you course, 10 pick it. is just what you, you want for a disruptor. It's it's yeah, I'm guaranteed pretty, I have to go for it now. Pretty the, confident and yeah. cocky move to last pick your position five. I think OG's definitely feeling themselves at the mm -hmm. moment after that victory from Nygma. Mm -hmm. I do think that it is like Nyx Sand King is one of the worst off lanes, I would imagine. So I think Sumail will have a pretty all right game, even though he's playing Naga into Sand King. Now I'm gonna disrupt his... their combo. Dude, look at yeah. his combos on a song. Man. I, th I think the Sand King pick is just really underwhelming. So I, I gotta favor OG with this game one. Yeah, to me it just it just looks easier. I mean, I love it's... how they stole all of Tundra's heroes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was so smart because I think that Tundra is just a little bit lost. Um, trying to find a pairing for Snaking to play on this Nyx, which is kind of like the big difference. Usually it's Snaking or it's, it's Fada playing the Nyx on the safe lane with the Skitter, Luna, or Terrorblade. Yeah, I think yeah. this game's gonna be the most interesting to watch. Like how does Snaking adapt to this style of Dota versus what he's been playing for the past five games straight and winning, right? Yep. Yeah, we're gonna find out. It is game one of a best of five, so even if it doesn't work out, you know, plenty of time to adjust and come back stronger. But uh, both my analysts think that OG has got game one in the bag. Let's see if Tundra can once again prove my analysts wrong. Let's head over to our commentary duo of Lyrical and AY. Thank you so much, Shiva, on the panel. Yes, indeed, that is what we always want to do, prove our uh, panelists wrong. Uh, Aoi, you, you looking at these drafts, we talked about it right before the start, uh, these combos that you can get with the Naga Siren, and you had mentioned like one of the only things that you can BKB is, is Disruptor uh, Aghanim, so you can't BKB, rather. So they've got the combos this game for sure on OG. Yeah, I think it's actually the only thing you can BKB, you know? It could be wrong on that. But even if you get Black Code or like a perfectly timed Ravage or Auto you can't BKB off. How Dota works is like nothing, like stuff happens on the same frame, but there's always a order. Nothing really happens at the same time, and BKB gets priority. How the disruptor eggs, it hits you during the sleep. So if it's already on, you can't get priority. I think, okay, so Seb has gone for the no item build into, oh I'm assuming, God. a fast. Ring of I, mean, I would like to see the Helmet Dominator that Ice 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 pulled on the Singapore Major in 3 3 use in this tournament to great effect. But we'll see if he goes for Ring of Health for a faster hood, because there is a lot of magical damage coming up from Tundra or the Helm of Iron Well. I'm pretty sure this was an Arkosh strat, if I'm not mistaken. Wait, what's uh, Arkosh strat? The it's zero it's item off laner? Yeah, exactly, except it's not a Pudge this time. Yeah, it, it looks a lot better on heroes that aren't Pudge, because okay. other heroes are less pathetic and weak. But yeah, the, the idea is really good, right? Because regen is expensive to buy. So if you can get away with skipping it, like it's a greedy idea. He thinks like he can get carried in lane. I, are they putting the... No, no, this is just coming for the rings. It's some bottom Tidehunter. Peter was mentioning on the panel, but you just air the range creep and so nullify any aggression for your opponent. It'll be good to see that one. And obviously you can just ferry out regen, uh, you know, Soxa, if he wants to, he can just uh, give him either tangos or uh, healing self since there is no more uh, cooldown on tangos anymore. You can just constantly do that, uh, at least until he gets that ring of health. And we'll see if they can try and punish this. And I like this, they're starting tri lane on OG here. They might get a kill here. Pada's done a pre-show and he's trying to zone, but they don't know about the third hero here. Okay. Yeah, looking for an opening, possibly, oh. as we do get a pause to start. Oh, I mean, he still has another shield. Even if this arrow hurts, it hits, it's going to be really hard yeah, to go for a kill. He can take off the Disruptor Q for it. And, you know, it was OG who paused, which I think it's an advantageous pause from Tundra, because they see right. that Soxa coming in from the side there. Right. You good? The uh, matchup good? I'm a bit curious about is actually the mid lane one, because traditionally, Lina is supposed to counter Razor. I think we saw nothing since one second as top lane. They're, they're still going to be battling here. Okay, going for it. The chase forward. Maybe they're just going to stick with this. I mean, All right. throw out the uh, the arrow, giving Seb a good start. Certainly not a bad idea. And it does look like he's doing what you're talking about, rushing that Helm of Iron Will uh, on this, this Tidehunter. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. I think you can kick a Luna out of lane if you go for this belt. Anyways, back to the middle lane. I think we saw, I think it was nothing to say versus 
either Abid or Carl. But he, he played this matchup as Razor, and he actually went even or slightly ahead of Lina because he just maxed the plasma field and played to do that. Normally, Lina's like sort of supposed to counter Razor. I mean, they picked it. Yeah, they picked it after the Razor this game, so they had the same idea. Oh, it uh, certainly has sort of been a, a redefining of how these mids work is down bottom three threes uh, taking a good chunk of damage here just from the spam coming from no tail uh, but it, it definitely feels like people are coming up with new ideas of how to counter out these heroes as Fata going to connect the creep waves so That's that very is nifty. Uh, that was really good he, he ran in front of the tier one to grab the wave as soon as he had to read that Soxo was going to do that. As a result, like normally on Radiant, you have this big lane pull advantage where you can like deny a wave from your opponent, etc. But here he sort of nullified that. They're not even going to manage to connect the wave to the next screen wave, so this lane is just going to be straight in front of Tundra's Tower. Such an outrage. Very nicely played by the Fata Abba and simultaneously trying to get some stacks off at the same time. Uh, we haven't really taken a look at bottom all that much yet, but there's two sort of brawly melee heroes in uh, the, the Nyx Assassin and Sand King. Uh, talking about sort of weak laners to some extent, but if they do find people out like this, might be a chance for first blood. No tail? Oh, doesn't have Burrow Strike yet on 3-3. Three, three. All right, that'll stop the, the aggression. He does have two solves on no tail. He loves to buy those solves for his carry. And, but I think they're pretty happy with the Sun Tundra at bottom. They're going to get to pull to the neutral page, just sandstorm everything here, and get a lot of farm on 3-3. Them to watch for and lead as No Tail coming to try and contest this, maybe soak up a little bit of XP, but Snake King does manage to find him, uh, and we'll shove him back for the moment. As up top, Zeb keeps this pressure on. Yes. Talk about how strong this ability is actually going to connect with the arrow. Ada pops the stick, gonna go for a chase down. He does have a point right now in the curse. But Skitter doesn't want to chase. He's just hit these creeps under tower. And it is. It. Thank you so Whoa. Much. Whoa, they're in deep. Yeah. And that second solve from Notel coming in clutch. If he didn't have that solve, I think mid lane would pretty much be over. You know, you're forced to walk back to base this early. Well, a nice Off start. It, it is 4 CS to 18, by the way. Tidehunter is not having a good time. I mean, Soxo's doing bottom things where you're always happy, but Tidehunter is suffering. That is not what you would want to see. Uh, and he is just running around now, arrowing uh, large creeps. This is the, the classic that I feel like we've seen a few times now with the Marana. Um, and sort of the, the lane's breaking down a little bit already. No Tail putting a lot of effort uh, towards mid, trying to make sure that Thompson has a good time against nine. Uh, they've been able to go relatively even here, at least for the moment, 14 and six versus 13 and four. And that does set up for Skidder to have a really nice start. He's one of the top CSs in the game right now. Yeah, both sidelines, I think. I think Tundra are very comfortable with what's what happening. They do get a Centaur Stomp onto 3-3, uh, three, three, so he takes a little bit of additional damage, but he's just pulling waves into neutrals and sort of hyper-accelerating here. And Sanking, he's not a particularly strong hero, but it's four minutes in, 3-3, three, three, he's gonna go sell his branch for a Vanguard at four minutes. And that means, like, you can kick Nagasaren out of lane with this. I play a lot of Nagasaren, just, it's one of my favorite heroes, and Sanking has, if he has a good start, Sanking's one of the hardest Ooh. heroes to deal with. Snaking, taking a lot of damage down bottom. The right click's coming through, good burrow strike. That keeps him alive. And 3-3 three, three will be able to take back over the slanes. As you mentioned, it's just, it's so hard to do anything against the Sand King now. And normally you think Nyx, Sand King are just pathetic laners. But honestly, right. it's the same for Naga Siren. She's just okay. not that powerful in lane. Just, I mean, she's, it's not like she's bad, but how Naga Siren lanes is you focus on your own farm. You sort of shove the wave in with like illusions of reptide, and you don't care so much about how your opponent is doing. Well, certainly given a, a better start to the Sand King than we're seeing for Seb here. Although, again, as you mentioned, it's it's we got to keep this in context of the Marana uh, moving around, getting farm for herself. Uh, is going to place a pretty aggressive ward there back behind the mid tier one tower as well. And they have another one up on this cliff, uh, which we'll see if Snake King has an idea that it's up there. Yeah, so he's going to be able to go for this D ward. Uh, Soxa is <laughs> getting a little bit up in his face as well. Very awkward situation there. Gonna try and go for the deny. Oh, throws out the stun. Well played. Good sub by Snaking. So no kills yet. A very different 
game from what we saw in the lower bracket final. Ooh, and a very pivotal rune steal from Snake. Oh, he's going on to die. This is the LSA. Trying to go for him. Is it going to be enough? The big arrow Snake King looks for the stun. Not quite in rage. And nine. Able to live through it, but does get the Abotic Shield afterwards. Upson still able to get that finish. With one last punch, and Fada dropped down low. Snake King wants to kill Topson. This dude's alive on 26 HP. Oh, he might he die. Should know he that there's a ward there. Ooh, wait, they've got Mist Coil, but don't want to turn to try and burn. Topson gets out of there. Oh, that's that a huge play. Anytime you have these attack. lanes, uh, you know, you counterpick the lane with the universe razor. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. He finds Fada as well. Anytime you have these lanes where you're sort of supposed to counter pick your opponent and win the lane, and it swings the other way for whatever reason, it's a huge deal in terms of the draft. Just any, any time, you know, as a drafter, like anytime you think something's gonna happen and your game plan sort of falls apart, sometimes you've like, you've overcompensated for it in other parts of your draft. You're like, okay, mid's winning, so we can be a little bit weaker on our supports this game, you know? Abaddon next, they don't make as many moves. But Thompson makes these big plays against solo kills. Like, what are the moves coming in from Tundra now? You have to wait for 3 3 to get really farmed. And he is very farmed, as you saw from that status, one is. of the fastest vanguards that we've seen, but it is still going to be a while. And in that time period, it feels like OG can potentially make some stuff happen, whether it's around, you know, this Helm of the Dominator coming out from Seb, or whether it's, you know, just Topson running in there and trying to make some plays happen, uh, as we saw from that moment. And so many little individual counterplays, right? Like the ABBA being able to purge off the, the, the Q from All Disruptor right. and then, you know, getting a little bit over aggressive afterwards and getting that last right click before the damage steal wore out. But we'll see how this one goes as the runes are getting picked up and down bottom, they do go in for the kill. So 3-3, able to make something happen there on the Sand King. He just, he, that was a solo kill. He just stunned an epicenter to him. And it's a big Ray deal to sort of kill the attack. enemy support who's trying to cap the tower. Because that, that, what, what stands at the tower, they're effectively getting like a full lane of EXP and gold, right? Ray's so that kill is, is it's attack. basically worth as much as a normal core kill. You can see like the tower pressure coming in and it's not like Noto really wants to TP back Ray's bottom. bottom. I mean, he might, he's waiting for his TP at base. Fast. But it might not feel good because they'll just die him again this moment. Oh, he looks like he's going to go top. So they're wanting to try and get a return kill uh, since they have a feeling that this tower is going to start going down uh, as Fada keeps that pressure on. They have the Helm of the Dominator creep, which can tank through a lot of those tower shots too. And do Tundra want to come and contest this? Dyer's top tower is so good at warding up to the jungle. This results in Popson being able to come in here. Looking for something, they pull back Skitter. Disruptor, pretty good here for that. TP's away immediately. Oh, the stun! The chain is there. They get the Skitter kill on Fada. He's gonna go down to a couple quick ones from OG. As the tips come out, but Thompson's starting to feel himself here in this grand final. And immediately, Saxa, after setting up that big play for the top, he rotates bottom, he rewards himself. He gets to take all this farm and push the lane. They noted that 3 3 TP top, you know, Abaddon and Skitter both use their TPs in that play, so they're not going to be able to do anything aggressive. Now, Thompson's stealing the jungle, Saxa's catching up, and Tidehunter, even if like he's pushing that top lane, he had already done the 3 3, you know, where you send your centaur or troll and joined him in the gank. It's a very strong concept. Tundra did get some compensation during that play. Lina was able to shove mid, sort of catch up. We can see her rise a bit through the network. And 3-3, he defended top, and he's he's looking like a solid wall here. But it's really hard. Very good for OG. Yeah, it's so hard to come and try and push the Sand King out, but like you said, just being able to come in and invade like this that we're seeing from Seb, it, it kind of doesn't good. feel like it matters good. that much because you're shutting down this Luna's farm. You know, she's, Skitter doesn't feel comfortable here at all. 3-3 uh, is coming to try and connect the creep wave uh, over to the side with Sumail and No-Tail all around him. Happy center afterwards, they just dropped the ulti. Is it down on him? Down, Ravage afterwards. Is 3-3 gonna go down here? Yes, they find the kill. That is huge. Oh, jeez, they take down the impenetrable wall. That's the biggest kill on the map, and honestly, a little bit greedy from 3-3. He saw all the heroes top, but he just wanted to eco a little bit more efficiency. That kill does not happen under the tower, and honestly, it might not happen again if not for the center creep 
coming off from Seb's HOTD. I mean, it probably would have. They still eclipsed. But again, like, it's the value of this item on offlaner. This item fell out of favor a lot, I think, during this last patch. But it still gives you a lot of things. Like, there's a meta where offlaners always went for help with Dominator. Oh, is he getting a clip strike base? He can throw strike it. Oh, he misses tries. the burrow strike. Okay. Yeah. And now that's a, it's a long walk. Good He's going to dig himself up something. He's like, I don't even want this creep. Give me back to that lane. Uh, but the walk out there is going to take too long. As tier one will go down. And mid, I mean, it's, it's all just being pressured right now by OG. I mean, granted, it's less than a thousand gold lead, but it feels like the, the sort of pressure that's being exerted on the map is, is definitely uh, suffocating a little bit. Hunter did manage to get that bottom tier one tower, though. Yeah, that, that is very big for them. They, it's just all like this keeps uneven. I think how I'm talking, it feels like OG are making these insane moves. The thing about it's just like the nature of their lineup as well, because you're running right. Lina Luna cores. Both of these heroes want to farm a lot. Meanwhile, you know, Razor's gonna shove the lane in, go seal the enemy jungle. Uh, they've been very efficient on Tundra while all these plays are happening. You know, nine he caught up on lot despite the good play from Tossy Mid, and he's top network now. They need, and this is a big kill if they can find it, and they will. Laguna Blade comes out, and the right clicks to follow. Just as we're uh, talking about how, yeah, it's not quite as clean cut as it looks. Hundred do make that play to pull it back a bit more into their favor, and now they are uh, wanting to pressure mid, but Seb will come in and sort of put a kibosh on all that action. Uh, still down bottom, Stoxa gets a little bit of free time for himself, trying to get into those Guardian Greaves. Uh, get her? Oh, arrow. Is there anything else afterwards? It really, I mean, he's taking a lot of damage. Naga Siren Illusion hitting him hard, but Fada's nearby. Fada can kill him up a bit here. Is under Fada actually had no his ultimate prompt by a these. random neutral creep hitting him. The big thing, though, is they rotated all their heroes down towards Skidder to protect them, and Seb, he's just whacking them mid-tower. He has helmet and dominator, soul ring, and hood. No boots because he understands that if he just tanks up this game, damage from Tundra is very hard to get him to a Tidehunter. It's all magical right now. And with hood, crack and shell, and a return ravage, it's, it's just too scary to go on him. You mean no upgraded boots, right? He definitely has a pair of brown boots, but that's fine. Did, did he just get that, or am I <laughs> yeah. crazy? I, no, he just got that in his career. Okay, he went all those items before boots. Well, that's still pretty hype. Seb, being just a beefcake, taking over the Ancients now as well. And OG, they, they, they farmed so many of Tundra's camps, like even Sumail getting a boulder. He is scouted out by a Nyx, but there was that Radiant Center where that call was just Call point? Going for it. 3-3, three, three. see if he can find this kill to Thompson again. Down very low, but not low enough. Muted, 9, gets himself away. Zeb walking in, looking for that Ravage. Still, he's blocking so quickly, do they have enough damage? He's alive on 20 HP! Another round of them getting out on nothing! 3-3, three, three, looking for a kill, ring around the rosy. Sasha gets up to the high ground. They anticipate he's there, but he jumped down to the low. Tundra getting outmaneuvered a little bit as they lose the Luna and only get the Disruptor. Man. OG has to be the team with the most heroes surviving under 50 HP in the world. It is constantly happening. happening. Thompson survives, he comes back in to turn it around. He survived on like one hit. And then again, Sumel, one hit again. Like one more right click from Tundra and this game is swinging completely in the other direction. Again, it's an even game, but Tundra, that was like a big chance for them. Maybe even some beam RNG, you know? Maybe if uh, Skitter had a third point of beam instead of Aura or something, it's, it's, it's wild. Oh, that's the difference maker sometimes. That's all it can take. And yeah, I, I, I will say it's very impressive the way that Tundra has been able to like maintain this farm level, uh, you know, into this like very aggressive uh, pressuring type of lineup. And 3 3 here Dyer's will get caught by the arrow down time. bottom. Will be able to burrow strike out afterwards though. So, a bunch of heroes rotating in. And uh, again, Seb, the only one that's left up here on the top side of the map, but it still just feels so free to do this. Yeah, it, it's so hard to punish Seb for just walking wherever he wants. Uh, both offliners going for sort of more old school, I'd say, like a lot of items before Blink Dagger. I think recently the meta has been a lot of Blink Dagger's initiation on the offliner role. But 3 3, he bought Vanguard and Travels before. You know, Seb bought HODD and Hood. And it's more of a greedy style. So I think both these teams are gearing up towards the mid late game. It's fair. That's what we would want to see from these types of uh, 
players as well. No early GGs in this one. Again, a spot on the line for TI, the only nice. one from Western Europe through these qualifiers. Down way, bottom, so they're gonna go oh. again. Yeah, Invis and out of there. He's fine. Oh, thanks. Look at no Dolto, he's just walking into the enemy triangle, blocking ancients. Again, they, they already had it. I'm not sure if that other one blocked or not. Uh, they might have misplaced that one. But he also, he doesn't deal with this because he doesn't want them to realize that he was in there. So the, he spotted this observer ward with the sentry that he placed down, but just leaves it. Okay. That's kind of weird. That's sort of a weird play. I, I mean, Notel has a very wrinkly big brain, so <laughs> I don't want to question him too much. Either. But it's not what you would normally right, expect. But it, you know, these teams are standing in default. Nothing has really happened. But OG, they're slowly building their lead. It's not that we can't die to get on here. Good for an opening. Can they find it? TP's out, but the arrow's there. They were ready. It's interesting that, like, Disruptor being out of the meta for so long, like, the way that this hero can change the way that you have to play, it's really hard to deal with. And 3-3 is just going to try and get himself away also. Does manage to waddle out of there. And it didn't really matter there because they had a glimpse coming anyways, but I just thought it was cute how there was a creep blocking the arrow. So Soxa and Thompson had some communication where Thompson killed the creep before the arrow was fired, just to no. guarantee that kill. Uh, I mean, no tail was there with the infinite range glimpse anyways. But always nice to see that cooperation with Dota. Fair enough. Sumel, he's actually gone for an SMI, by the way. Not your usual matter. What that means is you, if you really want to hit the skill shine. Are they going for Septal? This is a big kill. Blink Dagger reveal. Jump right on top. Oh, there's pushing the lane as well. Seb, Ravage on to five. Can that get him out of here, though? Snake game. Push forward. Doesn't have the mana right now for the stun. He's looking for that next oh, well, round coming in. Can they get out of here, though? The Song of the Siren comes out, they all spread. Ravage is already down. The only target that they can spot right now is Skinner. Do they go on to it? They have the arena afterwards. Spada pops back, and enough. Yes, he's living. Skinner able to go for the turnaround. The Aphonic Shield doing work, but pops the Earth now. Nine trying to make something else happen there, but the rest of Tundra still alive. Seb again getting out with 100 HP. Nine dropping down low, but able to live through it. Sumail now turns on to Nine, tries to blow him up, able to find it, staking, also gonna fall. The only one left alive is gonna be 3 3 as Sumail gets the triple kill. Very impressive showing. Blink out. Does he get away? They spot him over there. You have the net after him. Oh my goodness. Catching him off to the side and the delayed five hero wipe is going to come out from 3 3 as Thompson gets that final touch. What a fight. And again, Seb, he's just living on 100 HP. His, his items just perfectly oriented towards the game. They're sort of all playing Tundra in these fights. I think it's like right now it, it was definitely OG's timing. Like if you have Naga Siren and you have Ravage, Static Link, Arrow, and Disruptor, all, like this entire lineup is tailored around the Naga Siren, which makes sense. It was the first two Naga Siren. It's very hard Dyer's to fight into them until your course of DKB. And both, mortality. I feel like they've gone a I'm little bit greedy on Tundra's side. Like Lina went for the Boots of Travels and Yule Scepter. I think at the Major we saw a lot of Yule's BKB and we saw from Miracle even attack. going Boots of Travels straight into that BKB. I would have preferred that a bit in this game. Right, it is making him a little bit more vulnerable to these combos. And I mean, in that instance, right? Like the Static Storm, he still got the, the Thotic Shield off to try and save it. Glimpse, a little bit misplayed there with Nine. He does manage to get out. This is a big timing for Tundra. There's no, there's no Static Storm, so that means that the sleep is much less threatening. I don't think they'll get to do anything with it. They pretty much still need to farm their BKBs. Skinner is going to disassemble his Dragonlance just to get out that BKB just a bit quicker because he understands like the necessity of this item of this game. But overall, like, look at the network. Oh, yeah. they're just pulling ahead. To be honest, going into this game, I thought if Tundra win this game with this draft, I think it's going to be 3-0. Because I, I, I thought it was so hard for them to fight. I mean, they can still win this game because Luna, you know, there's a reason why she's one of the best two carries in this meta right now, in this tournament at least. But it's looking a little tough for them here playing a little bit on hard mode and OG definitely taking advantage of it and making all the right moves constantly. Uh, we've seen this sort of, like you talk about, a little bit more brawly build coming out from Sumail uh, that's allowed him to get involved in these fights maybe earlier than you would anticipate from an Naga Siren. Bottom, 3-3 might get, nope, never mind. 
Right? They're smoking up a tundra though. They